good morning. It's uh, 10.01, so I would call the meeting to order at this time. Uh, and I would ask Rich Schwartz to give the invocation, please. Good morning. Good to see you all here this morning. Beautiful day. So, when they open the meeting today, would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with great thanks in our heart. Thank you for the freedom that we have to assemble like this. And thank you for giving us the brave men and women that work and sacrifice every day to maintain those freedoms for us. Thank you for the communities that we live in and the neighbors that reside by us. They're to help us when we're down and willing to accept our help when they need uplifted. We're thankful for organizations like Triangle Telephone that work to instill that comforting feeling that lets us know we are all important in their eyes. And your word that reminds us we are important in your eyes. We pray that this gathering will remind us that in what sometimes can feel like a torn and separated world, there is unity and peace in us if we just take the time to look around. All the ones that are dear to us, smile at our fellow man and listen for your teaching. You've given us an ever-changing world, but you've also given us the minds to think and adapt to whatever comes next. Change has been occurring for generations, but you know what is coming and have prepared us to face these changes. As your word says in Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Lord, we'd also like to give you thanks for this meal that we'll be enjoying later. We thank the farmers and ranchers that produce the food, the hands that prepared it, the hands that serve it, and the nourishment that it provides for our bodies. Please keep us safe as we travel back to our homes and families with renewed peace in our hearts, knowing that we have spent the day that was planned and blessed by you. Lord, we love you, and we give you thanks and praise for this day. It is in Jesus' holy name that we say, Amen. Thanks, Rich. At this time, uh, I'd like people to stand and say a pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call up uh, Rick Corny to do the termination of the forum and read the notice of the meeting and affidavit of May. Thank you, Rich. We have 57 members here present, and we receive the Law firm received 1,326 mail-in ballots, and according to our bylaws, the mail-in ballots count towards a quorum for this meeting. So we do have a quorum well in hand. Now, for the official notice of the 69th annual meeting of the membership, it is inside the front cover of your program if you choose to follow along. The 69th Annual Meeting of Members of Triangle Telephone Cooperative Association Incorporated of Haver, Montana will be held on Saturday, October 7, 2023 at 10 a.m. in the sub ballroom on the campus of Montana State University Northern in Haver to take action on the following matters. Number one, the election of two trustees of the cooperative. Number two, passing upon reports of officers, trustees, and committees for the previous year. Number three, conducting such other business as may come before the meeting or any adjournments thereof. In accordance with the bylaws, <coughs> excuse me, the nominating committee composed of cooperative members has nominated the following individuals as candidates for the position of trustees of Triangle Telephone Cooperative Association Incorporated. From District 1, Rich Schwartz, District 3, Eric Hansen, and Michael Ladenberg. 
In accordance with the bylaws, nominations by petition are also accepted and none were received. The name or names on, the note, on this notice indicates the name in which the membership is carried. Voting must be done by the members or in the case of a joint membership by only one of the joint members. No voting by proxy is allowed. Registration starts at 8.30 a.m. and lunch will begin after the meeting. Prizes will be awarded. Hope to see you there. Signed, Richard McCorney, Secretary <laughs> Treasurer, dated 9-18-2023. And then there is the affidavit of mailing of the notice. I, Richard McCorney, being, newly, being first newly sworn, state that I am the Secretary of Triangle Telephone Cooperative Association, Incorporated. On September 18, 2023, I mailed to each member of the, of the association a notice of the annual meeting of members to be held October 7, 2023. I deposited such notice with postage prepaid and addressed to each member in the United States mail at Livingston, Montana, and the copy attached to this affidavit is a true and correct copy of the notice of such annual meeting as mailed. Signed, Richard Gordon. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Rick. Uh, when you came in, you received a copy of the minutes from the 68th annual meeting. Uh, are there any questions on any of the minutes? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the, the minutes as presented. We have a motion. Is there a second? We have a second. Discussion? Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. At this time, we have a few guests I would like to introduce. We have State Senator Russ Temple from up in Chester, standing back over here. Thanks for coming, Russell. We always appreciate you here and your support. Uh, Current Hill County Electric trustees that are here is Nick Seabrass. Nick, where are you at? Nick, thanks for coming. And for past Triangle Telephone directors, we have Berlin Reichel. Thanks for being here, Berlin. So I guess at this time we're the report of the officers and trustees, do any of the trustees have anything they wish to say? Tom will be speaking a little later, so. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't know that, but he will. Okay, I do have a, a little report to give. Uh, first off, I'd like to welcome everyone here to your 69th annual meeting of Triangle Telephone. Uh, this year my report's gonna be a little bit different from previous reports. Usually while preparing for this report, uh, CEO, General Manager Greg Gates and I do not talk about what we're going to say. And most of the time we get up here and pretty much talk about the same thing with a little slight twists uh, from trustee to manage management. So uh, this year I'm going to talk a little bit about the history and what has shaped Triangle and also about Mr. Bangs who is retiring after 30 years. Uh, you know, he's, he's been very instrumental contributor to what has made Triangle, and I'll just name a few things. You know, back when we bought U.S. West property, uh, that almost doubled the size of Triangle when we brought it in. First, we went into Central Montana Communications with it, a wholly owned subsidiary. Uh, so that it kind of paid for itself, so our current members did not have to pony up for the money. Then it came in and it, it tied our north and south exchanges together uh, and also improved the economy of scale for our operations. Uh, also, during the 30 years that Tom was here, we were one of the first telephone companies in Montana to start fiber to the home projects. Uh, if it hadn't been for the pandemic and some few right away issues, we probably would have maybe been the first one to complete the fiber to the home projects. Uh, and with the fiber, of course, you know, I look back and it hasn't been that many years. 
uh, with all that we can now do with the broadband the triangle provides that we could not do previous to that. And if I, if my memory is correct, I think we started that in about 2007. So in, in a mere 16 years, we've just about completed and it's, I think it exceeds $100 million that we have put into uh, putting the fiber in the ground and, and getting the broadband to all the members. Uh, another thing was the mobile and fixed wireless we started. Uh, even though we have sold the mobile part, uh, if we had not done it, some of those rural areas, I doubt very much if Verizon or other companies would have built out to. <coughs> Excuse me. But with the structures that we put out and sold to Verizon, they're still offering that service out to our members. Uh, another one that's not as important now as it was is EAS, Extended Area Service. Uh, many of you probably remember when you made a call for Schnook to have her, Chester, Rudyard, Big Sandy to have her, etc. That was a long distance call. And uh, I remember Tom and I looking at an exchange map once, and he made the comment that these exchanges are really pretty narrow up here, and for kids, and parents communicating with some of the schools, it was a long distance charge for them to call home or call into the school when a kid was sick or whatnot. And it was also very tough for, you know, a farmer rancher out there or a businessman for everything was a long distance call. Um, he commented he wished we could do something and that did lead to the EAS that went from Chester to Malta and down through Big Sandy. As I said, now with cell phones and whatnot, it's not quite as important as it was back then, but before we had cell phones, it was. Uh, so after 30 years, it's gonna seem strange to me to look across the table and not see Tom there, or have the insight he's brought to the discussions. I found myself thinking on numerous occasions when we were having discussions. Wow, why didn't I think of that when Tom brought it up? Uh, Tom has always been a strong advocate for the co-op principles and that Triangle was founded on. During discussions, if we veered away from these principles or Tom thought we were, he would bring it up and bring us back to task. So uh, we appreciated that and that will be kind of missed. Also, Tom has been a very strong advocate for economic development and to keep Triangle involved in that. Uh, he felt, as the rest of us do, that that is a, a way to keep our youth in Montana uh, by creating some of these opportunities. And you've been watching the video over here so you know some of these, but Tom has served as president, vice president, Secretary, not only on Triangle Telephone, but also on our subsidiary Triangle Communication, and also on some of the outside organizations like MITS, which was our state organization, uh, statewide organization, and also on iConnect, which was our data center operation that we had with uh, two other co-ops in the state. So at this time, we have a small token of appreciation for Tom for his 30 years of service to trying to telephone. Also, I'd like to thank his wife, Carol, uh, and family for sharing Tom with us for the last 30 years. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So Tom, can I get you to come up here, please? Thank you very much. That's just awesome. This is a, a it's a book based on the slideshow. I had a whole bunch of grizzly jokes I was 
going to give the vision. Maybe it, they're doing so poorly, I won't even do it. Sorry. That's all right. I'll, I'll excuse it this time. I think the board, uh, well, we know the board and the management 
have really striven to continue to meet these principles of operating as a cooperative. And I have no doubt uh, that this board management and employees will continue this philosophy and try to telephone cooperative, triangle communication has a very bright future. So thank you, the members of Triangle Co-op, for allowing me to serve you these past 30 years. And it's indeed been my pleasure. It's been our pleasure to have you on the board. And, and yes, Carol will be missed here. So, a uh, couple things, you know, I, I always mess up when I'm doing this. I forgot to introduce my board. So, I should do that at this time. We have Rich Schwartz, Vice Chair, sitting here. Doug Lowry, from down to Big Timber. Tom Banks. Rich Corney, who is our Secretary, Treasurer. Liz Work from out south of Hayes, and Dave Schwartzbach from Big Sandy. And a couple other guests that I forgot to mention. Uh, Mara Keyes, our attorney, is here from Jackson, Murdo, and Rath. I probably mispronounced the second one, so thank you. And Suzette Gates is here, uh, who graciously allows us to keep uh, Greg employed here, so thank you. Uh, with that, we're going to move to the report of uh, the CEO General Manager, Mr. Gates. Hello everybody, welcome. Thank you for being our members, thank you for taking the time out of this beautiful day to be here. It really is uh, awesome weather. So, we do appreciate you doing that. Uh, Rich, as he said, he changed it up a little bit, and I kind of liked it because he used to take half my speech. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, I also want to thank the board, all of my employees that are here, and all the ones that aren't here that are out working and, and at home and hunting and doing whatever it is they're doing. Without them, we couldn't do what we do. And I really do appreciate it. And uh, those guys do, and gals, do a great job every day. They're just fantastic. I uh, also want to thank the retirees who are here, so if I miss anybody, I apologize. Uh, Jackie Parker, Chuck Schatzka, Ron Larson, Larry Kinsella, and Jerry Kinsella. Thank you very much for being here as well. We, uh, we built this company and we're on your shoulders, so we appreciate it. Um, also, uh, I want to thank Tom. I've only known Tom now for almost eight years. Uh, he's been a great board member. He's never been shy to express his opinion, which has been needed. Um, which, in a good board, you have to have board members that express what they feel and, and doing the best thing for the members. So I truly appreciate what you've done for Triangle, myself, and just society. Thank you. Um, also want to point out uh, somebody who won't be here next year. Um, she's down in the lobby and checks some of you in. Her name's Marcella Holden. Marcella will be retiring before the next uh, training way new meeting, so I just want to thank her now. So thank you, Marcella. So last year we got a couple of questions about robocalls and telemarketing. So the board uh, and management worked on trying to figure that out. And so what we did, and there's a little poster over there against the wall, and you all have a handout in front of you. Um, the board has elected to give every member free telemarketing call screening on their phones. So you have to turn it on, but it's because some people won't want it, so we didn't just turn it on for everybody, but the instructions are there with you and they're also in your phone book. And if you have a question, you can always call us at the office. But what it does is it allows, as you know, if you pick up the phone and it's quiet for a little bit, and then you hear them come on and say, hello, is Mr. or Mrs. so-and-so there? You know they're not your friend, your family, or your neighbor. 
So um, instead of doing that, it actually requires them to press one to go on. Well, today, they, the uh, telemarketers and such have not figured out that that's a requirement yet. So for today, this is a good tool to use for anybody who wants to turn it up on your phone at home. It is there for you free of charge. So we hope that helps. So Patty, uh, I said it was going to be a good day for you. So I'm hoping this is. <laughs> They have to press one. Yes, yes. They, right now, that doesn't happen very often. Good. Yeah, I can't make them go away. Um, Vincent Bites. So we, uh, we're only having the one annual meeting here this year. You know, the last couple of years, we, we experimented with having hosting a meeting down south as well. And, and they were OK. I mean, they weren't necessarily overwhelmingly attended, but they were well attended. And um, but the board this year decided to do something different. And what we did is we held this meeting as the annual meeting, and we held a couple of events, actually already held them before this meeting, called Bits and Bites. And one was held in Big Timber, and one was held in Arlington. And uh, i got to tell you, it was great. It was a member appreciation. We did it in conjunction with um, local football games, and we tried to do it with schools that were uh, all members, because as you know, we cover quite a vast area. So uh, Big Timber was against Columbus and we, we got um, about 80, you know, 66 members, 100 and some people to show up to that one, which was great. And in Arlington we got over 120 members to show up and we fed over 300 people. So it, it was great. It was very, very well received, very well attended. So um, that was a great thing that we did and it's continuing to tell people what we're doing and, and just show the appreciation that we have. A little bit about what we're finishing up this year. So Fire Me the Home, Geraldine, South Chester, and part of Big Timber will be finished this year. At the end of this year, we should be right around 94% complete with our entire service area. We have about 6% left, um, and that'll be for next year, and it's gonna be big, the rest of Big Timber. Hayes, Springdale, and Martinsdale. And, um, We've had some issues with Hayes and Fort Mountain right away, but uh, we're trying to figure out a way to get that done. Uh, and once that's done, all of the exchanges on that map, right back there in the district map, um, will have fiber to the home. And as Rich said, uh, it, Rich said 100 million, it's actually over 300 million, close to 400 million uh, we spent to get this done. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, but the team has done an, an exceptional job. We've averaged about 500 miles a year of fiber, so I can tell you how much fiber we put in. It's a lot. But it's been great. And, and we couldn't have done it without the leadership of these guys back in 07, saying, you know what, this is the direction we want to go, which is well ahead of the curve. Um, and they're absolutely right. Uh, I, think, I, I think we'll be the second one done. Um, the only one that beat us was Interdale up in Eureka. Um, they're very small, so uh, I still think we'll be the largest one done in the first. Um, as we heard, there was 1,320 ballots uh, accepted, a little bit over that. Uh, there's some of you here that still have to vote, and we'll hold that election. But I want to thank Eric Hansen and Michael Ladenberg, if you guys could stand up for a second. I'll be both over here. Okay. Uh, Thank you guys for putting in. Thank you for the nominating committee, for nominating both of you. Uh, I really haven't known either of these gentlemen very long, but I spoke to both, and they are just outstanding. It's going to be a great choice either way it goes. So I really appreciate you guys showing your concern and doing it for the co-op. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, because I've spoken about universal service in the past, and this year, the FCC gave us an opportunity to select a, a new version of universal service. It's actually called um, Enhanced ACAM. I won't get into the weeds too much, but uh, it does give us some certainty over the next 10 plus years on what our uh, level of support will be from the federal government. So from that perspective, it's a good thing. Uh, Mark. Uh, who you'll hear from here in a minute because they're in the financials and I really 
went over this several times to make sure it was the right decision for the co-op now and in the future, and we definitely believe it is. So uh, that's good news. So hopefully you won't hear us up here in the future whining about what the federal government's trying to do to us. Hopefully we'll have figured that out for a little while. Um, I did receive a, a question. Why is Triangle not issuing any new email addresses? We stopped that two or three years ago. It just became too too much of an issue. Uh, servers go down. We were having trouble. We've, we've given out three different email addresses since we've started this. Um, Montana in Touch, uh, CMC or TT, TTC CMC, and then it's Triangle.com. It just became too much to, to manage and handle, and there are so many free internet uh, uh, email address providers out there that we felt that it was just easier to go get a free free one handled by a very large corporation that can handle the changes. And, and not saying that any of you here really uh, demographically saying I'm probably going to be safe that would move, but if people move, they want their email address to go with them, and it's a lot easier to have one that's a national email address than it is one for us. Because when you do leave, when you do leave or move, you do lose your email address. So you have to be a member to maintain it. So that's another reason why. Um, I hope that helps answer that question. It may not be the answer you want, but it is the reason why we did it. Uh, I want to thank Suzette and Rich. Thank you for getting me in trouble later. Um, no, I, I couldn't do what I do without her. I really appreciate it. Uh, and Mark is coming up next. Uh, that's all I have. I will take any other questions anybody wants. And as always, you know, my phone number's listed. Um, call the office, whatever you want. I'm always available. I'll always take a question. We'll always do whatever we have to do to help. So that's it. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a member. We appreciate you very much. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. And I also would like to echo the appreciation for current and former employees. You're the ones that make things go out there. So at this time, I'd like to call up Mark Majors to give the financial report. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this year's annual meeting. I'll take just a few minutes to go over Triangle Telephone's financial statements for 2022. And if you want to follow along, they're on pages 10 and 11 of the little annual meeting booklet that was on the table. I'll begin with a few items from the balance sheet, which is on page 10. Total assets ended the year with a balance of over $350 million. Our property, plant, and equipment balances continue to grow as we complete more and more of the fiber of the home upgrades. The fiber of the home projects we completed in 2022 were the south portion of the solid multi exchange. We completed the Moore exchange. We started a portion of Big Timber Town and also started a portion of the Whispering Pines area, which is south of Big Timber. Those two projects will be completed in 2023. Triangle Telephone also started an upgrade to our high-speed transport network so we could offer increased internet speeds throughout our network. Triangle Telephone ended 2022 with a plant and service balance of over $376 million. And Triangle Telephone's balance sheet remains very healthy with total equity of 82.72%. Next, let's take a look at the statement of revenues and expenses on page 11. Triangle Telephone's operating revenues increased in 2022 to over $57 million. Our local network revenues were up by a little over a million and a half dollars, and network access service was up almost $3 million. Our total operating expenses increased slightly last year by about three-tenths of 1% or $120,000. Depreciation expense continues to be the largest of our operating expenses due to our large plant balances. For 2022, our property taxes were approximately $3.4 million. After subtracting out the property taxes, we were left with net operating margins of $18,294,000 up almost $4.3 million compared to 2021. The next category is our fixed charges. 
These are the interest costs for the money that we borrowed. And in 2022, our interest costs were about $1.2 million. Our total non-operating income increased to $19.6 million in 2022. The main reason for the increase was Triangle Communications, our wholly owned subsidiary, saw an increase of over $4.5 million. The next line on the income statement shows that we have a non-regulated loss of $8,629 in 2022. This brings us to our net margins for 2022 of $36,717,559. So as you can see, 2022 was up almost $10 million when compared to 2021. So a very good year for trying the telephone clock. With nine months of 2023 in the books, it looks like it will be another good year for trying the telephone financially with net margin projected at over $20 million. <clears throat> in 2022, trying the telephone paid back to our member owners over $11.7 million in capital credits between a general retirement, estates paid out, and discounted capital credit offer. In 2023, Triangle Telephone estimates it will pay out over $1.3 million in capital credits to estates. We will also be doing a general retirement in December, where we will be sending out another $1.5 million. And lastly, we offer capital credit discounting again this year, and we had over 2,600 members select that option. So those checks will be going on in December as well. If anyone has any questions related to the financials, I'd be happy to try and answer them at this time. <coughs> Seeing no questions, I'll turn this back over to Rick. Rick. Thanks, Mark. At, at this time, we have a video that Tom Metcalf put together for us. Uh, so Tom. Triangle Communications is proud to continue the cooperative principles that our founders built the company on back in 1953. The philosophy of cooperative principles and providing communication services inspired our beginnings and continues to guide us to this day. Over the course of our history, we've evolved from a telephone company to one that offers high-speed broadband and other services to support our membership. We're committed to bridging the digital divide and connecting our rural communities with high-speed fiber. Our fiber optic network allows us to provide services to meet the broadband needs for today and well into the future. Despite serving approximately one member for every two square miles, our rural members enjoy superior access to high-speed internet compared to urban and suburban areas across the country. As broadband technology leaders, we take pride in providing solutions that allow our members to communicate and thrive in today's ever-changing world. We deliver high-speed internet access that enables remote workers and rejuvenates the rural communities we serve. We thrive when our communities and members thrive. We're committed to making our region an exceptional place to live, learn, work, and enjoy for every one of our members. Thank you, Tom. Uh, before the meeting started, I was making notes on my sheet here, and a good friend came over and was giving me guff. Uh, but Carol, this is why I do it. Uh, I did not get a, a ask for a motion to approve the financials, so at this time, I would ask for a motion to approve the financial report. We have a motion, is there a second? I have a second. Questions? Questions? All those in favor of the motion to approve signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. At this time, if I could get Cheryl Darlington, I think she was the chairman of the nominating committee, to come up and read the nominating report. The 2023 Nominating Committee of Triangle Telephone Cooperative Association Incorporated met in the office of the cooperative in Haver, Montana on August 1st, 2023 at 11.30 a.m. 
Cheryl Darlington was elected chairperson. Members present were Cheryl Darlington, District 4, Paulette Keller, District Number 5, Richard Thornton, District Number 4, Carla Courtney, District Number 4, and Doug Mitchell, District Number 5. Those participating by Zoom were Jeff Banks, District 3, Stephanie Zindler, District 1, and Walt Stevens, Stevens, District Number 1. Nominations were District Number 1, Melville, Big Timber, Big Point, Rebel J. Brevue, Holt Exchange, Richard Schwartz, District Number 3, Chester, South Chester, Joplin, Rudyard, Hingham, Guilford, Kremlin, Simpson, and North Haver Exchange Areas, Eric Hansen, and Michael Ladenberg. There being no further nominations upon motion duly made, seconded, and unanimously carried, nominations are closed. The above listed members are to be candidates for the trustee election to be held at the TTC annual meeting of members on October 7, 2023. There being no further business to come before the nominating committee meeting, the meeting was adjourned. Thank you, Cheryl. I, I hope you didn't sustain that injury while you were doing the nominating committee. At uh, this time, I also would like to thank Bethany for helping put together the plaque for Tom and, and the book. Uh, not sure what we'd do without her. So thanks, Bethany. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, At this time, we're the election of trustees, and I'm going to ask our attorney, Warren Keyes, to come up and, and run that election. Warren? Thank you, Rich. So my name is Warren Keyes. I'm an attorney here. And I did just start with Jackson, Murdo, and Grant uh, earlier this spring, so that's a new change, but still in Great Falls. And then at least once a year, I get to come up and see you find people for the Triangle Annual Meeting. So it works out really well for me. So we are voting for trustees this year, and there are two districts up for election. So we have district number one and district number three. I know you all just heard the nominating committee report, but we did get three candidates nominated via the nominating committee. By our bylaws, we do allow for nominations by petition, but none were received this year, so we just have three candidates who were nominated by committee. So we always invite the candidates to come up and make a statement if they would like. So we're going to start with District 1, so the candidate for that is Rich Schwartz. Rich, would you like to make a statement? As stated, my name is Rich Schwartz, and I thank you all for being here. I thank you for the opportunity to um, serve you the last nine years. I appreciate the nomination, Cheryl. I'm sorry I twisted your arm so hard. <laughs> see my name on the list, but thank you for that. Um, it is my honor and privilege to serve you. Um, Doug and I represent District 1, which is the South Area, and I think due to the management and employees here, the South area has seen some more recognition and a little more involvement in the co-op than we've seen in the past. We had our bits and bites, as Craig mentioned, at Big Timber and Harlowtown. Um, we appreciate all the employees and staff coming down. I know that's a big endeavor to come down there. It's just about as far from here to there it is from there to here. So um, thank you for that. Thank you for your nomination. And um, I do thank you for your vote. And now we're going to do the candidates for District 3. We're going to start with Eric Hansen. Eric, if you'd like to make a statement. Now you see you sat so far away, it takes such a while long. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Eric Hansen, running for District 3. Um, from north of Guilford. I uh, grew up north of Kremlin. And uh, I don't have a lot to say other than uh, thank you to the nominating committee for uh, putting me in front of everybody to run for this position. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know all these guys. Uh, I took in the bits and bites and got to meet a lot of the members down in the 
southern parts of the state, which uh, is just beautiful down there. They've got a lot more rain than we are, so where we have, so I'm kind of jealous, but it was a nice trip. Uh, and I'd just like to thank Tom for all his years and getting to know his family over the last few years. Um, that's about all I have to say. Thank you guys for voting. Sounds like it was a great uh, turnout for ballots. Uh, it's kind of funny, Mike and I are sitting together, you know, we're just like-minded people from the community. Uh, we're both members, and uh, I just think that speaks to how we feel and how we uh, want to be on the board and, and how we're gonna uh, vote just for the members and because we are members, so uh, just thank you guys for showing up. Beautiful day. I want to get out in the sunshine because I know the snow's coming one of these days, and I'm sure you guys do too. So thank you just so much for coming, voting, and being involved. And also through District Three, Michael Ladenberg. Michael, if you'd like to make a statement. As I said, I'm Mike Landberg. Uh, I want to start by thanking Tom and the rest of the board. Uh, I guess I'm excited for the opportunity to join these guys. Uh, I better start. Uh, my 10-year-old son was on a on his way to a baseball or sorry football game this morning. And I was trying to pump him up and kind of get him ready to go. So he said, "Well, you got to give a speech today." And I said, "Yeah, I think so." So he's trying to pump me up. He said, "You know, Dad, the best way to start a speech is to start with a joke." So uh, he made me tell this joke, and it's. You know what it means if your computer kind of has a snivelly nose? It's got a virus. <laughs> I feel like that fits a little bit with the technology side of the internet and stuff. So anyways, 10-year-old human for you. Um, I guess I don't, a lot of what I was going to talk about, they kind of covered with the history of the cooperative. Um, my grandfather was one of the first uh, members. He was 20 years old before phone service came out in Simpson, uh, which is North Tower. Um, and so he got to see the first phone system put in, and then here a few years back, I get to see the first fiber system put in. So I think that's kind of exciting. Um, I think that proves that for years, Triangle has tried to provide service to our communities. Uh, you know, I think a big important thing we have to remember about a cooperative, it, whether it's the employees, the board, the management, whatever, you as members, we have to remember cooperatives are here to serve us as the member owners. That's what they were here for. To, you know, no one was ever going to bring fiber internet to you know North Haver and all these little communities. So I think that's the most important part about a cooperative is to remember that member owners are are here. It's here for the member owners, not for necessarily the, the biggest financial gain you've ever seen or anything like that. Sometimes making a little less less money is more important to uh, serve the members with you know, full service rather than just focus on financials. And I think there's a lot of cooperatives to this day that are getting losing that focus. So um, I guess thank you all for coming. It, it kind of shows you guys care about the cooperative spirit and uh, I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for those statements, they're all great. So now we are going to do the in-person voting. So we already have commenced voting via mail-in ballots. So if you did receive a mail-in ballot and you sent that in, you have voted, it has been collected by me, you're good to go. But if you need to do in-person voting today, now is the time for it. So if you have one of these white trusty ballot slips, look like this, you can go ahead and stick that up in the air, and we will have people who will come around, grab that, and give you a ballot to vote on. And when you do get your ballot, you'll just grab one of those pens on your table and vote for your choice. Again, there's two districts. But please only vote for one candidate in each district. So just one per district.
everybody's received their ballot, when you have completed your ballot and by selecting one candidate per each district, please just hold it up in the air when it's fully completed and we will come around and collect that in the little bit.
the second winner is so that was the same one, uh, Sunken Farms. Okay, the third half of pig is Mark Dealman. And I apologize in advance if I say your name wrong. <laughs> um, Teresa Gorowski is another half a pig. <laughs> the last half a pig is Jean and Coralie Welty. We also have some quarter of beef that we're going to give away. So we're going to give away three quarters of beef. So those will be the next drawings. The first quarter of beef is going to Jennifer Habits. The next quarter of beef is going to go to Harold Goldhahn. The last quarter beef is going to go to Larry and Judy Kinsella. Okay. Now we're going to go on to some $50 cash prizes. So the first $50 goes to R. Duval. Okay, the next $50 cash is going to go to Pat and Marty Schmadl. <laughs> My parents maybe should be excluded. <laughs> they are members though. Okay, the um, next $50 cash goes to Earl Boucher. Boucher. The next $50 cash goes to, goes to Lenore Jessel. Tom is at 50 cash again. Denise is at 50 cash. Okay. Two more. Okay. So then the next one goes to E English. And I have one more $50 cash. And the next $50 cash goes to, to Brian Johnson. Now we're going to, uh, Brian was by the entrance. Do it again. Okay, Brian's an employee, so he's saying to draw again for it. Uh, so the next one is uh, Cancelo Ranch. Okay, so now we're going to go on to $50 bill credits. And with the $50 bill credit, you can fill out the back of the form, and then if you take it to the registration table, we'll go ahead and get it applied on your account for you. You don't have to mail it in. So just fill out the back and then take it to registration for all the bill credits. Ron Mangold. Okay, the next $50 bill credit is Scott and Donna, Donna Pike. Okay, now we have a snack basket, and the snack basket is gonna go to Terry Tillman. Okay, now we have the money plant. Maybe you will leave here a millionaire. Probably not, but we'll see. It goes to Willis Chocolate. Okay, now we have an assortment of a baking basket, and the baking basket is going to go to Lori Kirkley. Uh, now we have um, NISC, which is who our billing vendor is. They sent a Carhartt utility tote with a screwdriver set. 
And that's going to go to Helen Fultz. Now we have a Roku Ultra with JBL headphones. Um, this is the, um, makes a TV into a smart TV. The Roku is going to go to Robert Dalzell Sr. The next Roku is going to go to Richard Thornton. Or Thornton? Thornton. Okay, and now we have some mugs and Yeti Ramblers and a wine tumbler. And that's going to go to Gary and Mildred Smith. Right. Uh, NRTC, which is one of our national organizations, they sent an Amazon gift card. And that's going to go to Charles and Beverly Peterson. Now we have a duffel bag, and this is going to go to Gary Reddick. Now we have a coffee basket with grinder and coffee beans, and that is going to go to Michael and Kathy Bartz. Now we have three um, $100 bill credits, and this is the same as the other bill credits, just fell off the back and take it to registration. The first $100 bill credit is going to uh, Connie Kistner. All right, the second $100 uh, bill credit is going to Mark and Monica Goldhawn. So then we have a hundred dollar gift card, and the hundred dollar gift card is going to go to Douglas Stewart. This is from one of our contractors that does fiber to the home for us. Um, this is going to go to Strix A. Okay. Uh, now we have fire extinguishers. Um, the first one is going to go to Glenn and Janice Whaley. The next one is going to go to um, Patricia Ann Truss. 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 Okay. Now we have a laptop bag, and the laptop bag is going to go to Greg Jurgerson. Now we have a soft-sided toolbox, and the soft-sided toolbox is going to go to Tom and Jacqueline Fultz. Okay. We have another um, toolbox, and this is going to go to Jerry and Emma Jane McGilvery. Now we have some $250 gift cards. The first $250 gift card is going to go to Clarence Doney. Okay. The next $250 gift card is going to go to Rod and Isla McClanahan. The next one is going to go to Will and Carol Mangold. Okay. The next $250 gift card is going to go to Rodney Keith. Okay. The last $250 gift card is going to go to Jeff Banks. 
Okay, this next gift is a big cooler that C and I sent. Um, there, who is our after hours tech support? We won't haul it to your um, table because it's quite large, as you can see. But um, we'll go ahead and put your um, once you're done, we'll haul it out to your vehicle, or if you need help, or you can grab it on your way out. So the winner of that is Rosemary Peak. Let us know or we can even drive it to your vehicle. So, you are welcome. Alright, so those are our member only gifts. So now if you, everybody wants to bring out their orange tickets that they have, give me a second to get those out and then we'll start doing the, um, the um, slips. Switch pages here. Okay. So the first one is some long sleeve t-shirts and the winning number for this is going to be 580702. 580702. Okay, we're going to try that again. Five eight zero seven two five. Got a winner? Perfect. Okay. The next one is five eight zero seven seven three. Okay. We have one more shirt. The next shirt here in order is. Five eight zero seven four four. Okay, now we have a it is five eight zero six seven eight. Five eight zero six seven okay, perfect. Okay. We have a cutting board and cookbook and clip. Um, this is five eight zero seven seven two. Okay. Now we have the next one is five eight zero seven two zero. Five eight. So we've got it. Yeah. Five eight zero seven nine seven. Five eight zero seven nine seven. Oh, straight back up. Okay. Now um, we have a credit towards glass repair at Holden's Hot Wheel. We have five eight zero seven eight six. Okay. Now we have a gift card to Cavaliers here in town, and that the winning ticket is five eight zero seven zero seven. Okay. Now we have some twenty five dollar um, Haver Chamber gift cards. Um, if you're not familiar with the Chamber gift cards, on the back is a listing of all the businesses you can use them at. So the first twenty five dollar Chamber gift card. Goes to five eight zero seven zero zero. The next Haver Chamber gift card is going to go to five eight zero seven one six. Okay. Next one is. Five eight zero five zero eight. The next one is five eight zero seven one four. Could you raise your hand again? There you go. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a gift certificate to Norman's Ranch Work. 
that is going to go to 580755. Okay. Now we've got some more chamber gift cards. The next one is going to go to 580712. Chuck Jessica. The next one is going to go to 580753. Okay. The next one is 580684. Okay. Now we have a, another Cavalier gift card. This goes to 580759. <laughs> I like the enthusiasm. Okay. The next chamber gift card is going to go to 580685. Now we have the uh, another chance of big money. The next lottery tree goes to five eight zero seven five seven. Now we have a waffle maker, and the waffle maker is going to go to five eight zero six seven nine. Okay, so now we have some pullovers. The first one is going to go to 580746. Okay. The next one is going to go to 580513. Very good. Now we have five eight zero seven seven nine. Right now we have a blanket, and the blanket is going to go to five eight zero seven eight nine. Okay, we have a popcorn popper. This one is going to go to 580708. Okay, now we have a 28 can backpack cooler, and the cooler is going to go to 580775. Okay, we have another money tree. The lottery tree is going to go to 580715. Perfect. Okay, now we have another insulated tote. The tote is going to go to 580776. Okay, we have some lighted gnomes. These are going to go to 580752. Now we have a set of three cuisine art mixing bowls with lids. This is going to go to 580. 737. Oh, you have a winner right here? Okay, now we have another duffel bag. The duffel bag is going to go to 580717. We have a Visa gift card. This is going to go to $50, okay? It's 
going to go to 580-787. Okay. Now we have a Montana shaped cutting board. The cutting board is going to go to 580765. Okay. We have a $50 gift certificate to 406 Custom and Sound, and this is going to go to 580510. Okay. And now we have a fifty dollar gift card from Pivot. Pivot's a marketing firm. Um, their number, the winning number is five eight zero seven three five. Okay. And then we have a Bluetooth speaker from um, Holden's Hot Wheel. That's going to go to five eight zero seven six six. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So before everybody gets rid of their winning or non-winning orange tickets, on the back of it, if there is a um, pen marking on the back of them or a sharpie marking, um, you can take home one of the centerpieces. So you can decorate with that. So even if you didn't win, you may have won. All right. Now we'll do the grand prize drawing. So the grand prize prize drawing this year is a $500 bill credit, and it's the same thing, you can um, fill out the back of it and then turn it in at the registration table and we'll get that applied for you. So the winner of this year's grand prize, actually if somebody will tell what you draw. Yes, to be your final drawing. <laughs> okay, the winner is Lois Butcher. Thank you.